Hey there, friends and foes. Good morning, Multiverse. This is Back of the Cereal Box. I am your host, the prophet of pop culture, John Pica. You can call me Johnny. And we got an action-packed show this morning. We're going to be talking about Superman and Lois. We're going to be talking about uh, Batwoman, Black Lightning. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. And we have a very special guest, comic creator Doc Hogg with us. And open lines with you our viewers, you can join us on camera, and we are going to do that right now. Hey there, guys and gals, friends and foes. We are back with another great episode of the Back of the Cereal Box podcast. And we already see some viewers watching. Uh, stick around, uh, folks who are watching us right now and posting comments like Cindy Kep, who says good morning. Uh, stick around because we'll have an opportunity for you to come on camera with us live. And who is us? Well, of course, I am the prophet of pop culture, John Pica. You can call me Johnny. And in her bedroom studio is the one, the only, the super talented, beautiful, incomparable D. Barty. Good morning, D. Barty. Good morning. You've been up for a while, I can tell. <laughs> only an hour. <laughs> you you have decided to uh, go all the way out <laughs> this morning. I love it. And, and there's a good reason for that. D. Barty is wearing her Superman uh, T-shirt. And um, we're going to tell some stories about D because she's going to review uh, <laughs> the new Superman and Lois scene, uh, series. But we're going to uh, probably talk about this moment. <laughs> That's my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to the restraining order. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um Here's how this works. Uh, and Aubrey X is, uh, I think she's going to be joining us audio only. She's having some camera problems this morning. Uh, we shall see. We shall see. I hope so, because I want to get her feedback on uh, uh, a couple of things. But um, here's how this works. For those of you watching, the, the, the premise is simple. Wouldn't it be cool if a group of best friends like me and Dee Got together on Saturday morning and ate big bowls of breakfast cereal while we talked about cartoons and movies and cool geek pop culture stuff. And that's what the show is about. So if you're going to be on camera with us later on, make sure you got a big bowl of cereal, except for D. D rejects the entire premise of the program, <laughs> and she'll only drink coffee. But this morning, I'm having one of my favorites, Fruity Pebbles. And do not. Hey, I broke out the Superman coffee cup today. Woo oh, yeah. Woohoo. And for those of you watching, do not try to adjust your screen. The color is right. D. Barty. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. I had the weirdest. I had the weirdest dream last night. I tossed and turned quite a bit last night. But I had this weird dream where I got up early to go get a haircut before this show. Now, I went to just get a good clean shave in the dream. That's what I went for. <laughs> like but, a haircut? <laughs> but, but I was, you know, I had let it grow out and it was, you know, kind of look, looking a little uh, un, untamed. So I went to get a new shave. And instead, the uh, the stylus spiked my hair electric blue. So I thought, well, this has got to be a sign. And so I, I did the blue this morning. So I like it. Superman blue. Woo -woo. You know what? That wasn't even intentional. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I can tell you are. Now... We've got a lot of comments already. Um, Cindy Kep says, nice hat. Cindy Kep is like my, 
my psychic hat sister. Look at this, Cindy. Look at all those feathers in there. I think there's actually three. But then I also have, this might be familiar to some people. It's a, a hair stick. Do you use these, D? You know how you <laughs> roll up the hair and then you put this? No? You have no idea. Okay. I, I have, look, I mean, I have a ton of hair. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. I mean, it, it, that would not stay in my hair. Teresa Dunn says, good morning. Melissa says, yay, live. Larry Hoy says, morning, guys. And nice coffee cup, D. Thanks. Scott Hitch Hitch Hitchcock says, what cereal today, John? And it is Fruity Pebbles. One of my all-time favorites. Okay, mm. so I I did something that I okay. promised that I was going to do. So yes, since you I, did. I, I don't eat cereal, but I found a back of the cereal box that's actually not like just an advertisement or like win a PS5 or whatever. Yes. That's all I can find. So this is Fruit Loops with marshmallows. These camera angles are weird. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it actually has like little activities like find five letters hidden around the scene, then rearrange them to answer the riddle. And so it's got several things like that. So this is what we used to do as kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and did you introduce that to uh, Izzy and Nathan? Did you get them to do the puzzles? No. What? Maybe I should. Yeah. Uh, hello, D. <laughs> Maybe I should mm. film it. <laughs> yeah, it's you should. You it's should hurting film my it. eyes. Well, if you can turn it down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like blinding me. Cindy Kep says that's nifty decor. I don't know which one of us she's talking about. My my movie room and game room with the movie <laughs> posters behind us or your um beautiful is that a king or queen size bed? So it's a queen. I'm in my guest room. Normally okay. I'm I, I try to film in the office, but the internet is really bad. So it's better in the guest room. So that's why I'm in. Cindy Cap says, I have a few hair sticks. Well, put them in your hat band. I think they're a cool uh, accoutrement. Have you tried blue Cheerios? No, I haven't. Oh, man. Cheerios. We, we need to try some blue cereal or blue Cheerios. I've not seen it. Berry Cheerios. Berry Cheerios? Okay. <laughs> well, they're, are they blue, though? They could be. No, so Cindy Cap says hat decor is what she was talking about. Okay. Eli Cash says, I do not have a webcam handy. If I'm being quiet, I'm working on the comic. Window was being a window. All, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to read that uh, that URL because uh, nobody will remember it. And uh, Scott Hitchcock, 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 Hitchcock. Oh, my gosh. First day with my new tongue. I used to have that exact same bed she bedspread is what he says. And no more way. Philly cases. That's, this that's thing hilarious. is so old. This thing is like 18 years old. I can't believe that. That's awesome. So everyone who is watching, stick around because in a minute we're going to open up the lines for you to join us on video. So Scotch, golly, Matt, <laughs> why Scotch? I'm just going to call you Scott Scotch from now on, Scott. Oh my gosh. You need so, your coffee. <laughs> I don't, what is going on this morning with my my tongue? But um, someone that I am not going to have a problem uh, introducing is a very special guest that we have this morning, uh, and he is in the green room. Uh, comic book creator Doc Hogg. Good morning, Doc. Hey, how are you? I'm nice doing great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me here. And like I like I promised, I'm I'm uh, dressed in my bathrobe uh, this early in the morning. But I did uh, add, per your <laughs> per your request, I am wearing a shirt. <laughs> and 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 yeah, I am wearing a shirt. <laughs> which which you say that as if it may be an odd thing for you to be wearing a shirt. John, what are you <laughs> drinking? With a bath with a bathrobe. I am also drinking cock and bull diet ginger beer, ginger ale. Ah, ginger it, this ale. is the good stuff. 
This you is, really look like beer. I'm like to think that all I'm having is some coffee and some and some oatmeal. I'm, this, I'm having my oatmeal. I'm being a good boy. Excellent, excellent. We love that. This this stuff. If you've never had cock and bull ginger beer, it's a soda. Um, this is the good stuff because it's so it's so gingery that it burns your throat going down. Oh, it's so good. I love it. Mm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Sounds so, delicious. Doc, Doc, I see you have another window open, mm -hmm. uh, another screen. What's on that screen? Well, if we go over to that screen, it will be my comic book, uh, Tilt Part 2, uh, which right. I will be happy to, uh, uh, you know, uh, talk to you about. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Tell everyone who you are, what you do, how you got wrangled into this show, and we'll uh, flip up that screen here in just a moment. Um. Yeah, well, uh, I am, my actual name is David Hogberg. Uh, believe it or not, I do actually have a doctorate, so it kind of made sense if I, uh, when I decided to get in. Uh, and this here is my <coughs> love and pride and joy, my son Charles, who uh, is a little ham and uh, always needs attention whenever I go on one of these <laughs> shows. So uh, we'll be uh, uh, giving him a little, he, he got this new little toy that uh, if you, from grandma for valent kind of late valentine's day ah! present. and if you turn it inside out it uh turns into a is this the puppy or the bear a the puppy. Pu that's the puppy okay and, and the it, uh, and then it turns gray and then it turns white ah okay all right so yeah um <laughs> I'm on a little pride and joy here, and uh, I decided, you know, when I started making uh, comic books and, you know, doing media via YouTube and, and uh, Twitter and so forth, by the way, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter or Minds, I just joined Minds as well, it's just at Doc underscore Hog, but it just made sense to call myself Doc Hog uh, instead of David Hogberg or anything like that. Um, at any rate, a um, friend of mine gave me a call one day, I'd always been in into comics, and um he uh, wanted to gripe to me about a check he had to write to the IRS, which, um, you know, he called me because he knew I'd be sympathetic. And um, <laughs> is anyone paying any attention to what I'm saying right yes, now? Oh, yes, oh, I am. Yes. <laughs> Probably not. Um, IRS, sympathetic, go. Yeah, and he just said he, he was getting into indie comics and comics gate and so forth. And I said, uh, so I started talking about it because I'd always enjoyed comics. And um, I had a bunch of story ideas running around in my head that I had no idea what I was going to do with. I certainly wasn't going to try to write a novel or anything. And I said, you know, they might work uh, as uh, as uh, comic books. And so... Uh, he just started, uh, you know, hooking me up with groups, and I started asking questions, started working on a script, and uh, eventually the one I came up with was uh, one called Tilt, uh, which is about a uh, heroine by the name of Jennifer Poehler, who has the ability to make the characters in a deck of cards, the kings, queens, and jacks, come alive, and um, that is, uh, forms the basis for the, uh, for the story. Very, very cool. And how I got roped into this show, uh, I think I probably roped myself. I ran I ran across you either on uh, Twitter or maybe on YouTube and just asked if I could possibly be on. and uh, Or maybe it was Facebook. I, I don't remember now. I yeah, never it, yeah, it could be. And, um, <clears throat> and I, you I were will... gracious enough to say yes. Yeah, and um, let, let me put out this disclaimer there. Um, I, I've not fully had a chance to vet Doc. So uh, we, we got to put this disclaimer out that the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of the hosts, the advertisers, or uh, sponsors of Back of the Cereal Box. Or, now you or, have or, 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 or my son either. But uh, Okay. You know. <laughs> now, you, now you have freedom, uh, a little bit of freedom uh, to speak freely. Um, so this is... Yeah, let me uh, bring this up here. This is yeah. Tilt. And I dropped the uh, link into the private chat, so uh, if yeah, you're able I to drop it into the main uh, I chat, I would appreciate yep. it. Yeah, this is Tilt Part Two, and if you didn't get on to get in on Tilt Part One, that is available uh, uh, here. You just choose which tier you want, and then you will be able to purchase Tilt One as an add-on. If you want to just do it as a uh, the add-on as a PDF, uh, that's only one dollar, and as a hard copy, it's only uh, only eight dollars. And no. um, Yes, go. I, now, I, Doc, can you expand that artwork any on on your screen? Like, do a full um, screen. Do you know how to do that? 
I'm not sure I can expand that particular artwork. Uh, I could, um, I guess I could increase the screen size some. Yeah, but, there you go. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. Um, ah, okay. That's good. Yeah. Here. Uh, hang on. Let's see if we can, uh, what is, why is it doing that? Okay. Hang on. Here we go. All right. There we go. There we go. That's a little, let's try. Uh, there try we go downsizing it a little bit here so we can uh, yeah this is uh this is a uh actually going to be a pinup that uh will be available as a stretch goal once i get uh, a couple more uh, reach 135 backers this was drawn at drawn and colored actually by the color uh the colorist of uh, my comic book her name is Lenore King, um, and what you've got here are the the four queens, and in the front is Jennifer Poehler, and um, you got the Queen of Clubs, the Queen of Spades, the Queen of Hearts, and the Queen of Diamonds. And let me tell you a little bit about the story here in Tilt: is that uh, Jennifer's dad, Larry, uh, who is a professional poker player, likes to play with mobsters, but he gets killed by the mobsters, murdered. And um, in the af and and then they're they're out to get Jennifer. And in the afterlife, he begs a spirit to give his his uh, daughter a power and um, uh, to, that that will protect her. And the spirit agrees, gives her the power to make the kings, queens, and jacks come alive. Uh, and they are there to protect her. And here is the newest version of uh, Goldeneye right here. Um, yeah. Uh, oh boy. Um, and. At any rate, uh, but there is a price for that power, and that is that she has to use it to eliminate the mobsters who murdered her dad. And she just, you know, uh, part one goes through the story of her, um, you know, uh, agreeing to to do that, uh, how she eventually, you know, decides to do it because she's very reluctant at first. And then uh, part two is kind of the big... Uh, uh, is, um, um, well, I like to call this comic book Superheroes Meet the Sopranos. And uh, this time it's the Sopranos that get whacked. And this is in this uh, issue, part two is going to be kind of the big slaughter. She eliminates with, with the help of the Jacks and the Queens and the Kings. She eliminates most of the mobsters. Uh, however, Jennifer's weaknesses are that she's somewhat impulsive and somewhat reckless. And that's going to come back to haunt her at the end of uh, issue two. Um, she, a uh, few of the remaining mobsters, uh, are able to track her down and that's going to have some consequences at the end of part two, which will lead into the final issue of this story arc in part three. And, um, so yeah, uh, this is, uh, this is a pinup that will be available as part of the stretch goal. Uh, this is the other pinup that will be available as part of the stretch goal. Uh, this is the virgin version of the, uh, of the standard cover right here. This was inspired by the movie Stay, uh, Under Siege with Steven Seagal. And um, you remember the wonderful scene where Erica Laniac jumps out of the cake. Well, that's basically how, um, how uh, Jennifer here sets up the, the mobsters. Uh, what, Charlie Bear? The and the same one. Uh, how about uh, how about we do that after I'm done with my show here? You want to no. go back and watch your TV? No, but I want to show them on. Here. Oh, you you want to show them on here? Okay. What what, what does he what does he want to show? I took um, I took my golden eye off. Yeah, he, you took your golden eye off. He just he wants to show some comic book uh, uh, swag that I got a while ago and well, that, that he likes. That, that uh, is a perfect segue for our weekly loot section we do that every week doc okay um so so tell him to get his stuff ready i'm gonna show uh some of the stuff that i got and by the way for everybody watching if you want to join the show i just popped up the address uh the stream yard address that banner will stay there and um just type that url and you can join us so here's what i got this week and is it charlie is his name yes Charlie, here's what I got this week. I got a Cara Dune pop. I love Star Wars. That's what I said. <laughs> I, I, a friend of mine, Cat D, who might join us on air, we don't know, she bought a bunch of these at Hot Topic because they became excessively rare uh, with the firing of Gina Carano from Star Wars. And she picked up a bunch of them and... She shared with me. So I got a Caradune pop 
And uh, it is on my Caradoon shelf in the Houdini room downstairs. Now, also, guess what came in the mail this week, D? What? Oh, I want that. <laughs> this is the Barbets trick uh, trick box. Now, I, I did a, a, an unboxing and a review on our Instagram page, so you can go see that. That came this week, and then yesterday, we're gonna open this bad boy up live on air from Barbets and Tricks. Let's see what's in this package. Mm. Oh, it's my fire wallet. Uh, the, the flaming wallet. Oh. Yeah. Now, so excuse so, so, me. So, so I have Star Wars pictures. You do. Hold on, just a minute. We're gonna get to you, Charlie. So, so for those of you watching, and you saw the show. Uh, with Eric Olson. He's going to be on our uh, friend show, Reels and Heels, later on. I opened this this morning, and I, I was looking at it, and I couldn't figure out how in the world does this work as a fire wallet. Eric, it is that good that I couldn't tell at first glance how that works. So I got that. Now, one last thing, and then, Charlie, you can show your stuff. I got this, the Munsters Vinyl. It is the newest teenage singing group, The Munsters, inspired by the TV show, The Munsters. Now, I've not listened to it yet, but... Excuse me, is that a... It is a record, Charlie. See, look, and it's, a, it's an orange record. Look at that! Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Dee Marti, were you a fan of The Munsters? I wanted to tell him something. Right. I've what? never seen it. You've never seen The Munsters? No. What what is wrong with you? All right, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, show us what you got. Your turn. Show and tell time. Um, excuse me. Um, is that a comic book or no? No, it's a record. It's a vinyl record. Ask your dad. He's got vinyl records, surely. What 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 is that, Charlie? This is a button, and this turn, is turn it around. Turn the button around. There you go. It's a button. This is not a button. It's the same one. Yeah, it's a sticker. <laughs> big, big decal. Yeah, they're stickers. Outstanding. I think, I think that's from the comic Johnny Phantasm, which is uh, a pretty good comic. But uh, yeah. You know what? I don't Are think we all I've done now? seen that. No, uh, he's going to show you one more thing. <gasps> oh, I love live theater. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> So while he's grabbing his one uh, one other thing, I want to uh, just put this uh, Indiegogo. Oh, there he is. He's back. What do you got, Charlie? What do you got, Charlie? What else do you have? I got more of them. Oh, this came from Grant. Did this come? Who this come from? Oh, that came from, uh, I think you got those from Valentine's for School. Well, you got to pick them up and show them to the... Uh, Show them to the camera, big guy. I know that. Okay. So John Wilson uh, just commented to you, D, that if you've never seen the Munsters, you didn't get the song F Agatha what, what all they? along. Transformers, right? Transformers. I didn't. Transformers. Yes. Oh, I love Transformers. The other ones. So hold it up again. Let's see. Ooh, that's that looks like GI Joe. Is that a Transformer too? Yes. Yes, it's from it's from Rescue Bots. Awesome, awesome. Ted Davies is joining us. He says good morning. And uh, John Wilson, the famous Johnny B, is in the house. Uh, you guys watching, get ready. Uh, I've I posted the uh, posted I the link. What else you got? Oh, that that's Optimus Prime. I know that one. So you're you, you, <laughs> that's not Optimus Prime. That looks like Optimus Prime to me. Who is yeah, that? I don't think that is Optimus Prime. Looks like him, but it may not be. Who is it? This is Optimus Prime. <laughs> that no, that that looks like Mega Closer to Optimus Prime. That, not that looks like yeah, Megatron to me. Optimus is, Optimus Prime is red and blue. Yeah, I know. And you held up the red and blue. All right, we'll have to agree to disagree. All, right. we all done, big guy. <laughs> I want to show my comic book. 
Uh, I don't think so, big guy. Maybe, maybe in a little while. Okay. I don't think. I don't Thank think you for joining us, Charlie. Okay. You were awesome, buddy. So, um, so one last, awesome. one one last time, I'm gonna pop up your uh, Indiegogo uh, address, everyone. Uh, I, I love this idea. What's the name of the book again? Name is Tilt, and Tilt, tilt is uh, if you don't know, in poker, Tilt is a an emo uh, mental state where your emotions your emotions dictate your play instead of your um, uh, logic and reason. And um, that's kind of why I named the book Tilt because it's a, uh, her uh, uh, Jennifer's character arc is very much an emotional one. She's like I said, somewhat reckless, somewhat, um, uh, uh, you know, somewhat impulsive. And she starts out very reluctant, scared to do this. And over time though, she actually starts getting off uh, enjoying the adrenaline rush with it. But either way, uh, you know, those are bad character flaws to have, whether you're, you know, enjoying the adrenaline rush or you're scared and nervous. Uh, so um, at any rate, uh, could you, uh, would it be okay just to bring the screen back up and I can just briefly mention some of the, the swag you can get with it and uh, just finish it up? Oh, that. yeah, yeah, sure thing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, this is the, the standard cover that you can buy here. Um, and there is the, the variant cover here. Uh, you can buy them uh, by themselves or as a pair. Um, this is just some of the artwork. This is like the opening scene. Um, and this is just as she throws out the cards and they come to life. And here you have some of the mobsters seeing what's going on and oh my god and uh, then it goes back a couple of days the time goes timeline goes back a couple of days here's uh some of the battles with the mobsters between the kings and the uh the jacks and uh yeah and this is the uh, this this here is actually the 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 stripper that the jacks and and um jennifer kidnapped so they could put her in the cake and she could do the strip tease this was the stripper who was supposed to do the strip tease at the uh at the mobster's birthday party um and uh, this i actually based on my colorist lenore and she didn't realize it until i actually showed it to her on a uh, youtube uh, uh show and but uh, <laughs> she uh, <laughs> she she uh she enjoyed the surprise this is uh these here are two of the uh two well, pinups that you can pur purchase as an add-on uh Got the jacks all uh, taking and uh, getting an eyeful of Jennifer here, and we we called it uh, Jiggities. There's a double meaning here, Jiggities and uh, poker. Jiggity. Oh, oh, we get the double meaning. Okay, Jiggity <laughs> is a is a is a pair of jacks, and it's also uh, based on um, from Family Guy, Glenn Giggities. So uh, play on that, and then here is the the other pinup that is available for purchase, uh, uh, drawn by uh, Arch Cider. And uh, we like to call this Jennifer with junk in the trunk. And there is also a special 54 card poker deck that you can purchase. Um, this is what's going to be on the back of the deck of cards. And uh, there will also be the, uh, uh, when you flip them over on the front side, there is going to be uh, custom jacks, queens, and kings. So uh, here are the custom jacks, uh, jack of clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Queen of uh, uh, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. And the king of clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. So that'll all be part of the uh, 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 some of the swag that you can purchase. These are add-ons. And um, we also, in addition to the, th there was some art for sale. That's all sold out. But there are still some ways to get drawn into issue three of Tilt that are available. Uh, if you purchase one of those, you will get everything with it, the uh, the hard copies of the comics, the um, uh, 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 you'll get the deck of cards, the pinups, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, so uh, do uh, do back tilt. And if you look, if you just want to go the digital route, that's only that's only five dollars and you could still qualify for the uh, for the uh, uh, the stretch goal uh, pinups as well. Even if you do just go the digital route, I'll uh, get your address from you if you want. And I will, I will mail those to you when we hit the, uh, the stretch goal. That, and one last, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, that's very cool. One last thing. What up? I'm sorry. One last thing. What you said? What, what else? Oh yeah. Could I uh, play the, uh, my video here real quick? It's like a minute long. As long as it's appropriate for all ages. It is. All right, go ahead. 
it's that time again, my friends. Time to get tilted. The campaign for Tilt Part 2 is underway. Jennifer Poehler was in danger after mobsters murdered her dad. For her protection, spirits gave her the power to make the characters in an ordinary deck of playing cards come alive. Now she has to use that power to eliminate the mobsters who killed her dad. In issue two, it is time for the mobsters to face the music. But what price will Jennifer pay? Will her recklessness catch up with her? Find out and back tilt part two. Brought to you by the same team that brought you issue one. Written by David Doc Hogg Hogberg. Illustrated by Marcos Lima. Colored by Lenore King. And lettered by D. Jason Meadows. Bringing you 32 pages of sexiness, surprises, and slaughter. Tilt Part 2. Now on Indiegogo. It's superheroes meet the Sopranos, and this time, the Sopranos get whacked. All righty, thank you so much. And um, just one last thing, uh, the comic is uh, now completely colored. I'm just waiting on my letterer to finish a couple of pages. And um, I probably should be sending it to the printer sometime this week. And I'm hoping to start shipping at the end of this month. So um, very cool. If you back it, you will be getting it uh, in the uh, very near future. Very cool. Johnny B, I see you in the studio. We'll be bringing you on in just a moment. So be patient with us, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, well, Doc, that's very cool. That, that's the kind of stuff that, uh, as a kid, uh, I always wished I could have seen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> little cheesecake, little damsel in distress there. Um, for those of you there watching... Is no, there is no actual nudity. It's all just very, very suggestive. Yeah. I am, for, I am keeping it PG. But not PC. Absolutely not. <laughs> No, but, not right now, big guy. Oh, we're gonna get canceled. Let, let, for let, sure. let. Um, <laughs> so no uh, one else has. So no, no, no. So, uh, so Doc, feel free to stick around with this as long as you want. Um, if you need to jet out, that's cool too. But uh, we got a lot to talk about. We're gonna bring on uh, the famous Johnny B uh, from uh, the West Coast. It's six a.m. in his time. Yes, Ooh. Doc. Yes. Really, really early. <laughs> Doc, you raised your hand. No, I was just saying hi to him. Oh, so so I we got gotta, we uh we got to talk about this. D. Barty is wait, waiting with bated breath to uh, talk about this. <laughs> How does he keep the worms on his tongue? Who? What? How does he keep the worms on his tongue? Who? The one who's waiting with bated breath. Oh, on, Jesus, so these, are the, these that's are the jokes, bad. folks. These are that's the jokes. Bad. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the 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 uh, humor expressed by Johnny B does not necessarily reflect the humor of the, <laughs> the co-hosts or the sponsors of Back of the Cereal Box. So, uh, it may those of you back at six thirty a.m. out in his yeah, part of yeah. The day, so. so there's a reason why they call this an ungodly hour. Not even God gets up this early. And so I believe that. All right, so we got to talk about this picture. D. Barty with Superman, Dean Kane at Wizard World. We talked about this on one of our earlier episodes. This is this is the uh, event that uh, got a restraining order against D. Barty. She dropped her pants and showed him her uh, Superman tattoo on her uh, tramp stamp. Um, and uh, he, when we saw him again, he said, don't let her come near me again. Because this is what she really wanted to do with Dean Kane. <laughs> and you were worried about my video being age appropriate? I mean. Uh, you were supposed to show that picture, John. <laughs> so, so, D, we're going to talk about the brand new TV series, Superman and Lois. 
And you've got all kinds of stuff to say because if you haven't noticed by D. Barty's uh, <clears throat> accoutrement, she is a huge Superman fan. We're going to move you into center screen there, D. So uh, tell us your thoughts about Superman and Lois. Yeah, I took notes so I wouldn't forget anything. Okay, so first off, let me just say, what you said about Dean Kane is not true. <laughs> <laughs> There's no restraining order. And yes, I showed him my Superman tattoo because he showed me his first. Yeah, that's <laughs> how all these stories start. I'll show you mine if you'll show me yours. And the reason why I was giggling so much in that picture is because I asked him, I said, can I have a hug? And he was like, sure. He said, this one's for you. And then he squeezed me even tighter and said, this one's for me. And I was like, oh, okay. So, but I will have to say, I, I'm a huge fan of Dean Cain because he was my real first introduction to Superman, the old uh, Lois and Clark. So... As a kid, that's what I watched. And so I just totally like spazzed out when I met him. Okay. So this new show. You, wait, it, you spazzed out. You you nearly did a strip tease for him. I did not stop. Stop. Anyway. So this new show, I didn't even know was a thing until like two days before it came on. I had no idea. I happened to hear a preview somewhere and I like, <gasps> um, I was a huge fan of Smallville. Tom Welling is my second boyfriend. And I was really nervous because I thought, okay, great. Here's another Smallville. And he, you know, nobody can replace Tom Welling. I just like, don't even try. So, and, and to be honest with you, the actor, Tyler, blah, 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 I don't know how to say his name. It's Hawkland. Tyler it Hawkland. Hawkland. Okay. Yeah. Now, now wait, wait. Let, let me ask you a question before you get too far. Had you seen uh, any of the episodes of Supergirl with him as Superman on it? No. Or did, did you see the CW's Crisis on Infinite Earths? No. So you had not been exposed to him as Superman. He's been playing Superman for three or four seasons now on Supergirl. Oh, so okay. that's yeah. So this was why he was the natural choice, and um, he's a he's a he's a nice guy, by the way. I met him at uh, Indie PopCon the first year. He was oh, one yeah. of our cosplay judges. I am not a fan. I, I I I don't like his acting. I don't like him as an actor. I was pretty po'd that he was playing Superman. Really? Didn't know that, yeah, I, I didn't know that he played it on Supergirl, and so that, that makes sense why he was the obvious choice. But I gave it a chance because I was like, because I love Superman and everything that goes along with it. So I started watching Superman and Lois. Very low expectations. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it was a grown-up version. And what I mean by that is it was like they, because, you know, every story is either like him as a kid and growing up as a teenager like Smallville was, or you have like, like Lois and Clark where they're like meeting and there's all that drama. But this is, they've met, they're married, they have kids, and we're going from there. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, this is like Superman is like has a real life, you know? In in your stage of life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was my my thought and I love that. Um Yeah, so I love the new storyline. I loved the fact that he named one of his kids Jonathan. <sighs> love that. Um So, okay. I was a little shocked. Dylan Walsh was uh, Lois's dad because he will always be Dr. Sean McNamara to me from Nick Tuck. I don't know if you ever watched that or not, but I, I anyway, 
<laughs> I was like, whoa, are you going to perform surgery? Okay. So, sorry, Doc, we missed you. Uh, well, that's all right. I was just saying that was a guilty pleasure. Nip Tuck was a guilty of pleasure mine a few years ago. Uh, oh, but, you yeah. watched that too? Okay, oh, yeah. so I mean, like I can't see him as anything else. Nothing else. Ever. Everybody's got their own geek flag. Yep, yep. <laughs> um. So... I, I thought it was kind of funny that, like, Superman is Superman, but he's not a super dad. What did you say? <laughs> you did a strip tease for <laughs> And yeah. you said, I did not. Stop. <laughs> That's true. She did not uh -huh. stop. No, the comma's not in the right spot. Okay. Um, spoiler alert. Super sad. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If you're going to say spoiler alert, you got to give me, this is why I told you to send me your notes. Spoiler alert. <laughs> wait, wait, we need to fact check on this. All right, go ahead, D. So they, so he has kids, he has twins, and they're all like teenagers and stuff. And then his mom passes away, and I was so sad. And then they go back to Smallville, where he like meets Lana. And I thought she was going to be a bad guy at first. I was like, uh, but I don't think she is. I don't think they wrote it that way. No. I don't think it's uh, so. Um, because I was like, Lana was never a bad guy. I like her. So, um, yeah, so his mom passes away, and then they're like, oh, we're going to stay in Smallville. And I was like, yes. Yes. So it's kind of like his kids developing his powers are only one of them so far. And then they get to grow up in Smallville. And I don't know. I just, I really liked it. Um, so so did, did uh, Tyler Hoechlin convert you? Did you become a fan by the end of the show? Because... I'll tell you what, I thought he did a really great job and I wasn't a big fan of his casting on Supergirl because I didn't I just didn't think he looked like Superman. Right. And so you know that was another thing. I I, I was thinking, okay, him and the, the lady that plays Lois, I don't know her name, they're kinda too old to do like the smallville teenage characters. And well, then that's when right. I saw when I saw what the show was, I was like, Oh, they're perfect. Um, I thought he did a good job. Now, am I a huge fan? We'll have to wait and see on that one. Well, I, I will tell you this. <clears throat> um, the, the, the true tale of the tape came when he was playing Clark Kent. Because let, let's face it, there are a lot of actors out there who can look like Superman. But it really takes a good actor to play Clark Kent. Right. And, and he did a great job playing that bumbling Clark Kent character. And um, I, I thought that was the, the, the real telling part of why he was, uh, why he was uh, cast. You know, and I kept going, where is Lex Luthor? Where uh -huh. is Lex Luthor? Aha. Uh -huh. And then, so he fights the guys in and I'm like, Oh, you know, everything about him. you got to be Lex Luthor. And then he is. <laughs> That's outstanding. So I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that as well. Outstanding. <laughs> so Eli Cash says, I know a small the Smallville actress that played Lana Lane was allegedly uh, a bad guy. Keeping it innocent till proven guilty, a bad guy. What? Eli, I don't know what that means. We need more context. So um, uh, Doc, Johnny, did either of you guys... Uh, catch that debut of Superman and Lois? What are your thoughts? I have not seen it. I saw that picture you threw up. I'm wondering why Superman has a five o'clock shadow. Um, that is um, that is kind of his thing. Um, well, all the razors broke as he was trying to, to shave the video. That's cool. super strong uh, yeah. facial hair. <laughs> it really be difficult to uh, pretend you're Clark Kent and you've got the same exact five o'clock shadow going on like no 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 it's kind of isn't that dumb is she they're I know, married I know she's dumb but uh they're married oh okay yeah he doesn't need to hide himself from her <laughs> um it's a great show Johnny you need to check it out Open the door! 
Any, it, I have I not only seen how so many I, hours in the day, you know. You schedule I, it. I have not seen the show and um, don't know if I'm going to. Uh, I uh, I'll this this is kind of uh, not ex- related only in that it's Superman. I don't know if you all saw the news that Tanahasi Coates will be writing the screenplay for the J.J. Abrams uh, yes. Superman movie, uh, which uh, I don't know if I'll see this show, and that probably means I won't bother seeing the movie. Well, so, so <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you've read uh, Tanahasi Coates' run on Captain uh, the Captain America comic, all I can say now is sell your you know. It's Warner Brothers producing this movie. Sell your Warner Brothers stock now. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's taken so, that comic and 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 you know driven it down into uh, pitiful uh, sales numbers. And um, you know if he's going to take in a, a, a truly American hero from Kansas, uh, hey, uh, hey, Doc, what, what he's yeah, sorry. So yeah, you no, know, we 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 just try to keep it as positive here as we can. Gotcha. Um, I I will say. There is a lot of uh, trepidation about that J.J. Abrams Superman. And my criticism would be, why reboot the Superman movie franchise when you've just launched a brand new TV series that is actually, Doc, um, it is it is free of all of the uh, PC tropes that a lot of people complain about about the CW shows. Mm-hmm. Um, it is It is really, really, really well done. And oh, I good. highly recommend it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The good only stuff. thing that I thought was kind of ridiculous was his kids were like, you're not Superman. We've met Superman. And then, like, he takes off his glasses. That's how it like, works. I know. That's- I think it's so stupid. You do, <laughs> I'm like, John, take off your glasses. I'm not going to notice who you are. I hate that. I <gasps> It's Superman. Like, stop. <laughs> But they did that. They did that gag on Lois and Clark. It was beautifully done. Well, they explained. Well, his it. hair was a little different on Lois and Clark. Well, so, then- so here's the deal: John Byrne, in his classic run of Man of Steel, it was a comic series. He explained that. He explained the five o'clock shadow, and he explained why people didn't realize Clark and Superman were the same just because of the glasses. It's because when he took off the glasses, he consciously vibrated at this speed that any picture taken of him or anyone seeing him would see a blurred version of him. And so they could never, you know, properly line up and identify him. So vibrating. Well, that was another thing I thought of too, is that he like super speed, super, I mean, he's Superman. So he doesn't really stop and talk to people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. And the reason he's got the five o'clock shadow is because he can't shave with a razor. He's got to uh, use a mirror to bounce his heat vision and laser away the hair. And it's a pain in the butt. He probably doesn't want to do it every single day. So, and, and even if he does, by the afternoon, it's all grown back. He's Superman. So, um, any other thoughts, D? about Superman and Lois? There's a big surprise about the twins. We won't spoil it, but what you think is going on with the twins is not going on with the twins. Mm. Would you agree with that, D? I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about, but maybe. (laughs) We'll leave it at that. I think I know what you're talking about, so... All right, so I want to talk about WandaVision real quick. Last night was episode eight, and I am not going to give any spoilers except hardcore comic book fans, people who read the uh, John Byrne run of West Coast Avengers will understand what I am about to say. Two words, Vision Quest. That's all I'm going to say about that. And um, those of you who know what I'm talking about, if you haven't seen episode eight yet, stick around to the mid credit scene and have your mind blown. D, did you watch it last night like I told you to? Uh, No. I didn't have time to watch it yesterday. And here's why. I had an action-packed day yesterday and one of the big things was I broke my tooth 
And so I had to go have it fixed, my front tooth. Mm. Yeah, so they fixed it. I'm good, but I didn't. I was exhausted and went to bed early. All right, so Melissa says this about Superman. I finally have seen the new show, but I hate it when canon gets thrown out the window. This is supposedly the Supergirl Superman, and they have two children in this series and only one in Supergirl, and that's right. Um, they have decided to completely ignore the canon on CW that has come before and go forward with a new story. Um, and I guess there is um, there is some uh, precedent for that, even recently with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, you know, our WandaVision conversation is a good place to talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Kevin Feige has teased that they are coming back on Disney+. Plus. Uh, maybe not the entire cast because we know uh, Ming is doing Book of Boba Fett. Um, but um, they are a series that was part of the MCU canon up until the end of uh, season four. And then they just kind of threw the canon out the window and went in their own direction. They kind of had to because of the civil war that was going on between Marvel Studios and Marvel TV. But my theory is in that season seven, with all of their time hopping, they came back to the mainstream MCU, and they'll be part of the mainstream canon once again. Uh, Doc or Johnny, were either of you fans of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Mm, not me, I no. I did not watch it. I'm actually not a big Marvel guy. I know. I, I shouldn't even ask you, Johnny, because you've not even seen Captain no, America, I, the first Avenger, which is a diesel punk classic movie. I know. I, I, you and I can, you know what? Me. You and I cannot be friends anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wait, didn't you tell me you were going to send me a copy? And I can't did. find it. I, I think I gave bad, it away to somebody else. I, I, I cannot find it. But I so. do like WandaVision. I am finding it engaging. And I do know enough of the backstory that I can I kind of understand what's going on. But I've only seen like five or six of the whole Avengers. I, I call it the Avengers suite. There's like, what, 25, 30? 20, 22. Movies 22 movies. Okay. I have seen. I saw two Hulk movies, three Iron Man movies, and the Black Panther. Okay. And I uh, see bits and pieces of the rest on YouTube. Well, Johnny, we got... Dude, I, I, I can't even talk to you right now. Um <laughs> Fine. Now, now I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, he's all hot stuff over here. <laughs> I'm the one with the show, Johnny. Just saying. Sorry. He says sorry. <laughs> now, now here's here's Doc. You will relate to this, I think. So, mm -hmm. I have actually been a fan of the Black Lightning TV series. Mm. Um, the first. Two seasons I thought were really good. Season three, I, I don't even remember because they are in season four right now and they have announced that it is the final season. But there, it's the same story over and over and over. They're still talking about the war with the Markovians. Freeland is under attack. Uh, I can't figure out if Freeland is in such bad shape and there's so much super metahuman activity going on why doesn't someone from gotham or from metropolis come by to help out and uh, it's just become so so tedious and i know mm -hmm. a lot of fans have been very critical of it uh from the standpoint of its you know social commentary i'm okay with that um i think it was an important show for season one but it's just gotten tedious now i will say this for every Everybody who hated Batwoman season one, I want to tell you that season two is fantastic. Um, the new Batwoman, Ryan Wilder, actually has a reason to be Batwoman other than, oh, I just want to save my sister. Um, and uh, she, uh, she's, she's, it, it's a coming of age story. It is truly the hero's journey. And a lot of the uh, social commentary that people were critical of in season one is not there in season two at all. 
So um, it's just a fun popcorn show, and uh, I, I, I'm enjoying it a lot. Now, D. Barty, have you seen the new Batwoman? I didn't even know there was one. <laughs> so, okay, so here's the thing. Why are we all on this show? Like, I don't know why I'm not, like, where are the advertising? Like, I didn't even know about the new Superman. I watched The Flash. Does that count? (laughs) I watched the first season of The Flash. I actually Um, like it. Yeah, The Flash was good. I did watch, I have watched some of that, and... um, uh, I have not watched either of the the, the Batgirl or the Black Lightning. Um, they had Black Lightning in um, uh, a DC comic called Batman and the Outsiders, which yes. they just recently ended. Uh, but that was actually a pretty good comic. Um, I, I like the the run they did on that, and I was kind of sorry to see them uh, uh, cancel that. It was a good uh, good run. I'm sure you can still find back issues at your comic book store, and I'd recommend it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the series is is decent, uh, Doc. Uh, the first season is really good. Second season's pretty good. Third and fourth, it's gotten very repetitious, a little bit tedious. That's why I stopped watching The Flash. It was the same story every week, mm. and and well, it's I not anymore. <laughs> so, you know, it, it definitely picked up and. Well, is it still, oh my God, I got to save my wife, Iris. Oh, I'm so torn and oh, my parents have died and I'm without my mom and dad. And oh, is it that every week? No. I bet you it is. I bet you it's not. Why don't you watch it and find out? Well, well, I will say that. um, So it's like emo Batman. What's that? Emo Batman. No, it's an emo (laughs) flash. No, I mean, he's like emo Batman. He lost his parents, but he's like all boo-hoo about it rather than I'm going to be stoic and suck it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But a lot of cool stuff is coming out this week, uh, including last night in theaters, Tom and Jerry. Mm. Um, And it's getting good reviews. I don't know how I feel about this, though. Yeah, I'm I'm not excited. Just, I'm going to go watched, see it today. What? I'm going to go see it today. But, D, you're not excited? You watched what? I watched it as a kid. Like, that was was my childhood, was Tom and Jerry. And right. like, my kids actually watch the old episodes, and they love it. But I'm noticing with the remake that they just ruined the characters completely. Like, did you see the remake of Woody Woodpecker? Like, no. they made him just, they made him, like, cocky and... I don't know. I well, he was. I'm cocky. not excited. Woody Woodpecker was always an an a hole in the yeah, cartoon. Yeah, but I mean, it was like over the top. <laughs> I mean, come it was on. like I, no, it was over the top. Like, and I guess it's like modern day a hole. I don't know, but I just didn't like it. And I so know. I didn't. I didn't even know they did a Woody Woodpecker movie. <laughs> I, when was that? In the nineties? I don't know. <laughs> I just. I, I'm not. I'm I'm nervous. I'm not excited about it. So we'll see, I guess. I'm thinking about taking my kid to see it maybe next weekend. And um, after I see some of the reviews and make sure it is kid appropriate, um, I'll probably give it a chance. Uh, Right? So I'm kind of worried about that. Like kid appropriate. And then I'm like, don't ruin Tom and Jerry. Well, and you see. Well, you see. Don't do it in the 90s style with a very minimalist style. And that no, this is the event. this is the style. It's it's a a um, an animation style for Tom and Jerry, very similar to um, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, but everything else is live action. So um, it'll be an interesting, uh, you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of uh, experience. I'll say I love that. So maybe I'll yeah. have to go see it. And then coming up on Disney Plus, their next offering is The Bad Batch. Uh, anybody uh, fans of Clone Wars? Did you see the uh, introduction like of The Bad Batch? Dirty, dirty dozen for Star Wars. That's of. exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is, Johnny B. Um, and uh, they introduced The Bad Batch in Clone Wars Season 7. And uh, they were an instant fan favorite because they were the clones that the programming didn't take hold of. And so they're, uh, they're rogue clone troopers 
doing their own thing. They become mercenaries for hire, kind of the Star Wars Dirty Dozen. And then, uh, anyone excited about Raya and the Last Dragon coming out next weekend? This so comes out again, March 5th. I, I just saw a preview for this yesterday for the first time. What? I Dee, know. we've been talking about this show. I showed a video on the show. Do you even watch our show? No. Why would I watch it? I'm on it. I know what happened. <laughs> All right. That's it. You're canceled. I'm kidding, dude. But I don't know anything about it. It's the new Disney uh, animated uh, movie about uh, look, this I, I young saw female the preview. warrior. I saw the preview and I was like, is this Moana? Because That's what I thought. Yeah, she looks just like Moana. I was like, is this Moana too? Like, what is this? She doesn't and look then, anything like Moana. She looks more like Mulan. In this picture, but in the preview, yeah. she did not. In the preview I saw, it looked like grown up Moana. Watch it again. What? Watch Moana again. You watch no. Moana again. I watch okay. it every day. Oh, Jerry, Tom and Jerry. Jerry is a jerk, says Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry I agree is mouse. with that. Yeah, poor Tom. He he just gets He's the just short end of it. He's trying to do his job, it. kill the mouse. That's his job. He's a tone cat. Well, next Saturday, after this show, uh, we are hosting an event at Malco Cinemas in Smyrna for a matinee showing of Raya and the Last Dragon. One o'clock next Saturday, D. Make plans to bring the kids. Okay. <laughs> She's so enthusiastic. <laughs> now, we didn't we'll get to talk... Moana. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get to talk about this last week. I meant to. It was on my outline, but we didn't. Cruella with Emma Stone. What do you guys think about this? Um, I like the very first uh, um, uh, 101 Dalmatians, what they did with it originally. And I, I just... It's one of those things where I just don't know why they're doing remakes or even offshoots of it like Corella. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, just doesn't uh, doesn't do it for me. It is. Well, a... she, Go she, ahead, Johnny. It, I, I think they're trying to tie in with the success of uh, um, uh, the uh, Angelina Jolie with her being the, uh, you know, the. Uh, Maleficent. So, yeah, I think they're trying to do the same thing with this. Uh, trying to. Yeah, that's what I noticed. This looked like it was like a backstory of Cruella. Cruella. It is. It's a prequel. It's how did Cruella Deville become Cruella Deville? And I love those personally. Um, she I was like the Joker, but only one side of her fell in the vat and it turned white. And well, there you go. <laughs> I, I I loved Maleficent. I love both movies, one and two. Um, I'm a little nervous about this one. I love Emma Stone, and I think she's a fantastic actress, but I don't mm -hmm. see her as Corella Deville. Yeah. Um, I watched. The, I, I agree the with you. She's a fine. It. She's a very good actress. I I I watched the preview of it, and I was. I I don't know. I think that. She's too pretty to be girl. <laughs> I mean, because you know, like, like I grew up on 101 Dalmatians. Again, one of my favorite movies as a child. And I mean, Corella was supposed to be like this old, like, lady, and Emma Stone's like, oh, I'm Corella Deville. And I mean, I get it. She was probably fabulous. And so I don't know. I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to give it a chance. You no, like. Young. Eli Cash says about Tom and Jerry, half the time Tom's just chilling and Jerry comes along being a censored little piece of censored. <laughs> our, uh, our other co-host, DL Memphis, is uh, joining us. Uh, she says, I love Emma Stone and Cruella. Pulling some Harley Quinn vibes in there, though. That's an interesting take. Um, 
And uh, Melissa says, make it straight up horror with Cruella. We'll st- I-, I don't think they're going that route, but it is a darker, darker piece. It is definitely. Yeah. Well, she likes killing puppies to make coats. I mean, hey, it, Charles. it's not going to be a, a light fantasy. You're wasting it, so let's put it down now. <laughs> um, and Melissa says, horror, and it would be salvageable, too dark to be kid friendly. We'll see. Uh, and DL says, her voice and laugh is dead on, though. So, yeah, I thought so, too, DL. I thought uh, when I heard that, um, I, I was like, I'm all in. Ryan Permisson is joining us from uh, It's Nerd Culture. Uh, Gorilla looks okay. I'll give it a chance. I saw Unbre- Unbreakable for the first time, and it was really good. Ryan, what? You saw it for the first time this week? Ooh. I'm, Unbreakable, really? That's Unbreakable a good movie. is one of the best comic book movies ever made. And you know, it's funny, when I first watched it years ago, I didn't even realize it was a comic book until I started doing it. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a superhero movie. It wasn't based on a real comic book, but it was, uh, you know, drawing from those tropes. They probably made one afterward. No, they never did. They never did? No, it was... Missed opportunity. It is a huge missed opportunity. They did do the sequels with uh, 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 Split and Glass... So it's an it's a trilogy, uh, but uh, and Split was really good. Glass as a finale to the trilogy wasn't great. Um, I wish it had been better. But um, Unbreakable is one of my all time favorite movies. Doc, did you like Unbreakable? Oh yeah, I did. Um, I guess you know initially it was a little bit of a letdown because you know it was the movie that came right after. Um, uh, uh, what what was his first big movie? The um uh the one with uh, you know uh gosh I'm, I'm the, the Christopher to... Nolan Batman. Batman. No 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 no. Uh, M Night Shyamalan the uh, oh oh uh, after the, Sixth the, Sense the, the, yeah the Sixth Sense it was a little yeah. bit of a letdown from that but you know I didn't think it was bad and then when I went back and saw it a second time I'm like oh yeah this actually this works quite well as a as a movie um. The, the, you know, he was I you started to get the sense that he was a little ad- too addicted to the, you know, the surprise twist at the end. But um, <clears throat> uh, Sh- Shyamalan was. But uh, otherwise, you know, it works pretty well as a movie. Um, and then, yeah, I agree with you that Split was a good movie. And, oh. you know, Glass. No, Split, I thought was Glass. Split freaked was, me out. <laughs> glass. Glass was, um, well, Split's basically, you know, the origin story of the comic book villain. Where does that come from? And, uh, <clears throat> it, you know, it's, 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 it's a nice kind of follow-up to the origin story of the superhero where, you know, where that comes from. And, but, uh, I, uh, yeah, uh, Glass was a, a disappointment, a real disappointment. And um, I... I I uh, just thought he was trying to make too much uh, commentary on social media there at the end, and it just, uh, you know, overall just didn't work very well. Um, it just, it, it had a very uh, anticlimactic ending. It, I did think it was an interesting premise um, at the end with, with them using social media to tell the truth, and um, I, I thought that was interesting to keep the legacy alive and hopefully find others. I mean, it set up a premise for a universe that will never happen. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, just uh, I would have liked to have seen a, a another ending. Buy it. And, well, uh, <laughs> Split was great and Glass was okay, but could have been better. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I still love it uh, as, as a story arc, but I wish it had had a different ending. And uh, Ryan says, sorry I'm late. Anyone join the show via video lines? Yes, yes. Johnny B has joined the show. And we're actually over time, guys. We're, we're past an hour. We uh, try to keep this at, a sh- at an hour. So uh, before we say goodbye, uh, we need to run uh, some uh, thanks of sponsors. First of all, we need to thank the Hangin' with Web Show Web TV Network for uh, promoting our uh, show and uh, for um, letting people know about the uh, show. We love those guys. So uh, thank you. Uh, Hang in with web show TV network. And uh, also want to thank super fan. She's been watching with us. Cindy Kep. 
Cindy Kep, author Cindy Kep. Author Cindy Kep is writing on the edge. Books include Remnant in the Stars, The Loudest Actions, Lines of Succession, Mindstorm, Condemned Courier, The Yerushalon Series, and Animal Eye. Find author Cindy Kep at C-K-O-E-P-P dot com today. Outstanding. And also, we want to make sure that uh, if you like the show uh, and you want to support us, the banner down below, you can make a donation via PayPal, John Pike at JohnPike dot com. Uh, that helps pay for streaming service and whatnot. And uh, that is greatly appreciated. Um, also, I want to I want to uh, promote our new spinoff show, Back Issue Breakfast Club, starring Kelly Getner. And this week's episode will be a review of Birds of Prey, Volume One, by Chuck Dixon. Basically, Kelly uh, takes graphic novels and trade paperbacks off of her bookshelf and uh, does a uh, review for us. So you can. Uh, Learn about something new that you've uh, maybe never seen before on the shelf or never thought about picking up. So uh, check that out. It drops Tuesdays as a YouTube exclusive on the back of the Cereal Box YouTube channel. And um, anyone else we need to thank here? Uh, Doc, thank you for being with us. Thank and, you for having me. And uh, let's put this uh, Indiegogo up one more time. Check out his Indiegogo project at Tilt. Hold on just a second here. Sorry about that. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, right below. Yep. And uh, this is uh, the artwork once again uh, for the Indiegogo. So check that out at Tilt uh, on Indiegogo. Tilt Part 2. Mm -hmm. any, any, uh, do you have a website, Doc, that people also can check out? Nope. Just uh, you can catch me on uh on uh, minds and and twitter at uh at doc underscore hog and if you wish to send me an email it's d hog d h o g 70s uh so d hog 70 at uh gmail.com and of course find d bar t at d bar t photo and you can see incredible work like this <laughs> this is my favorite of that series d well, thanks. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait to see more. Can't wait to see more. <laughs> and uh, Johnny B, what are you up to in uh, Bakersfield area? Oh, well, um, currently uh, buying stuff with my stimulus check so that uh, I'll have a whole lot of extra uh, things for Uncle Pengy. <coughs> you can find me on uh, Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Uncle Pengy. Jo what Johnny B does is a great penguin cosplay, and um, Uncle Pengy is his penguin. Do the voice for us, Johnny. Oh, you doing bad. out there? Oh, they're in. Oh, they're in a uh, video land. Arr, arr. He he does the classic Burgess Meredith penguin from the Batman sixty six. Actually, have show. had kudos. From Burgess Meredith's granddaughter. So that's high praise. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Um, all right. Well, guys, we are past time. Cindy Kep th says thanks for hosting the adventure. Thanks for everyone who commented. Continue to comment. We'll answer your comments uh, throughout the week. If you like this show, make sure you tell two, 300 of your closest friends and family to come share the fun on YouTube, on Facebook. Click subscribe, post a comment. Oh, I almost forgot. Speaking of posting a comment and liking, we uh, are running a contest for um, Larry uh, Larry Hoy's book, A Bullet for the Shooter. Uh, he was on last week, and he sent me new artwork. Oh, and I forgot to upload it. So sorry, Larry. But our winner of his book is uh, Kat D. Uh, Kat D shared our videos. She posted a comment, and she was the winner of our drawing. So we give away stuff every week. And, uh, oh, I remember who else we needed to thank as a sponsor. We need to thank Barbets and Tricks. Um, 
he, uh, Eric Olson is a great friend of ours and, uh, become life of the party at barbettsandtricks.com. Use our promo code back of the cereal box, B O T C B to get free shipping anywhere in the U S. All right. That's it for us guys. Uh, Tell two, three hundred of your closest friends and family to come share the fun. And until the next time, love you, mean it. We'll catch you on the flip side. You're welcome. <laughs>